Hello, and welcome back to the KCC channel. I'm Rob, and I hope you are having a wonderful day today. Today, we're jumping into some malicious compliance. Our first story today comes to us from Unintegrity. You need to follow the law. Okay, no problem. Let's jump right in. I live in an apartment block in Europe with about 100 apartments in total. Every year, we have an election for what could be compared to an American HOA, where we elect a president and a couple of board members to manage the general expenses and daily maintenance tasks. Fixing garage port, cleaning common areas, security cameras. While we do have a rule book of sorts, nobody in the board has ever been too bothered by neighbors going their own way as long as there is no complaints. I am the president of this HOA as of today, and I have had my fair share of interesting neighbors, but this one takes the cake. He bought a fancy Tesla, which he made an effort to flash around the neighbors, kind of condescending on how useless old cars are, how we live in the past. Thing is, we don't have a charging station in the garage, so he has to go to the gas station to fill up the battery. There was no charger when he came in, so that shouldn't come as a surprise here, but as soon as he got the car, he started pestering the board asking about the EV charger. We need to keep up with the modern times, you know. We repeatedly answered that it is in our plans, and that we would love to get him on board to help us, as he was the main interested person for the task. This should make the process much more efficient. He never responded to the invitation to join and help. There is even a small payment for the board members, and we are slammed with other higher priority tasks that have suddenly popped up. Fire alarm upgrades, changing parts of the sprinklers, so we really cannot use much time in EV charging, although we all agree that we have to get that going. Suddenly, I got a phone call from an electrician reading from the law that we cannot deny an EV charger in the garage, and that he would come the following week at our earliest convenience. I just asked him for some time to read the law and make sure we were on the same page, and in the conversation, he slipped the name of the person who had ordered the charger. To no surprise, it was the Tesla man. There are others with EVs in the garage, and we have a fluent communication with them about this matter. They prefer to wait than to work on the case, which is fine by me. So I reread all the laws and our internal regulations to make sure that we were following everything to the letter. It turns out that the law forces an HOA to facilitate the infrastructure for EV charging, not the stations themselves, as long as there's not a force majeure reason against it, like economical reasons. And our internal regulations state that changing essential infrastructures of the building needs to be done under the approval of the General Assembly, which happens once a year. I talked to our finance manager, and he argued strongly against such an expense without getting a loan to partially finance it, as it would destabilize the economy of the community. With all that, we decided to comply with the regulations fully. One, we won't decide on any structural changes on the building until the next General Assembly. Two, we need a person dedicated to following the steps of finding providers, comparing offers, and presenting them first to the board, and then to the rest of the neighbors. This also includes safety measurements for the upgraded infrastructure. Three, once we have a budget, we will find bank offers for the loan that we will have to take most likely. Four, we need to hire a lawyer to update the rulebook to account for the use of chargers in the garage. As steps one and three are dependent on general assemblies, the process will inevitably be prolonged in time, and we know that neighbors are generally against taking up a loan that will increase their monthly costs. So he will have to fight an uphill battle for being a pain in the butt. The best part of this is that before this all happened, we were considering setting up a temporary charging station for everyone, instead of the ideal solution of everyone being free to set their charger on the spot that would not require a loan and was planned to be done during 2022. Now we will have to ask the assembly if this is an interesting way forward and abide by the response. I feel bad for the EV owners, because when the Tesla guy invoked the rules, the game changed. And now, they have to wait for all the official process, instead of having a temporary, just A-OK -okay solution while we get the rest in place. I would really hope in this case that a letter went out to every single one of the EV owners in that property, so they would know exactly why there's a one-year delay to get those chargers installed, and so that they can properly go and thank the Tesla guy. Do me a quick favor and take a look down below the video. If that subscribe button's still red, it means you're actually not subscribed to the KCC channel. Please hit that subscribe button for more daily Reddit stories. Our second story today comes to us from more pew pews than hands. 
Nobody can have a 5 out of 5 in all categories two years in a row. Mark him as a 4 out of 5. HR. Let's jump right in. These were the words my HR said to my manager when he put in my annual performance review for this past year. To explain a little background, I work in a niche part of research agriculture. I'm good at my job, I do it well, and everywhere I've went, I've made myself extremely hard to replace. Basically, I'm good at what I do, and it reflects. My manager is very open with me. He is the most transparent manager I've ever had. In fact, he shares with me certain deals that I'm not supposed to know, such as salary raises, bonuses, stupid things that HR says to him in an email. After another great year of research and proving myself invaluable, which not only included two raises, 25% salary bump altogether, a hefty bonus, title promotion, enrolled in a mentoring program, listed as an extremely high performer by upper management, and being put in charge of advancing several field technology advancement projects, basically incorporating new cutting-edge tech in the field of research, all while attending college, company was sending me back for free, I figured I had killed it for the year. Reports were done and filed. Everything from safety to EHS to the I's being dotted and T's crossed was done. I could not have finished the year any better. Now this was the end of my second year at this job. During my first year, I had been marked as a 5 all around by my manager. There's something like 4 categories you can score in, impressing not only him but several of the upper management seat holders as well as the company VP. That's what led to my promotion and raises. This last annual review, my manager was having issues submitting my review. After some emails back and forth with HR, he explained to me that HR had just informed him that nobody can have a 5 of 5 in all categories two years in a row. Mark him as a 4 out of 5. This was the general synopsis of the email. So I did what I do best when I get petty. I asked my manager to forward me the email, informed him I was okay with the 4 out of 5 rating, and that I don't expect him to try to fight HR on it, then let the process stew for a few weeks. After the reviews were finished and sent back, they were accompanied with AVIP projections for the next year, salary increases and bonuses, and what do you know, my percentages were marked lower because I had gone from a 5 out of 5 to a 4 out of 5. Since the report made it seem that my performance had lacked this year from the last, because of my score, even though my actual performance never suffered, I was put in a lower category of AVIP, meaning less money for me, which wasn't going to fly. I put together all of the report, the email from HR, as well as the input from both my manager and my peers that are included in my review, and emailed it to my VP, Director of Marketing, and Director of R&D with my manager and HR CC'd. I wrote, this is fairly summarized, due to the failure of the company to recognize my growth as an individual and mark me as slipping backwards on a progressional chart when it is obvious I had not, I will henceforth begin taking on only 80% or four-fifths of the current workload I have been assigned. I have been absolutely committed to the work and projects I have been assigned. In fact, getting my station ahead on audits, various projects, and coming under budget for the second year in a row seems to have been overlooked when due diligence was observed for my annual review, all due to the fact that an employee cannot be a 5 out of 5 twice in a row. I believe it to be absurd that this is how my performance is graded when I have had no complaints or issues from my peers, customers, or managers throughout the year. In fact, being told the exact opposite. I will look forward to my performance review next year to see how HR determines my new score. I sent this on a Friday at 4pm right before I left. I got an email Sunday evening from my VP with HR CC'd stating that my review has been changed. Monday morning, I had my new AVIP projections in my inbox. Sometimes, you gotta go to bat for yourself. It was mentioned in the comments to OP that they should be careful now because HR knows who the snitch is, OP's manager, and will make their life miserable for giving you the ammunition to call them out on. OP mentioned that they asked their manager beforehand if they were okay with them using the forwarded email, and he was. This story does make a good point though, that if something is wrong and you feel like you're being mistreated, you should stand up for yourself. Sometimes, that's the only way a change can be made. Our next story today comes to us from Sean Goes Outside. That was easy. Let's jump right in. I was looking for a Staples Easy Button as a gag item to put on top of a large radio tower for a climbing class I was hosting and organizing 
just before the world went sideways in 2020. I see online the local one has two versions in stock, and at least 15 of each. One version is even on sale. I was getting some work done on my truck at the dealer a short walk away, so I head over after dropping it off. The store has maybe four to five employees in the front chatting. I am one of two customers as there was an older lady getting things printed. I spent maybe 15 minutes looking but can't find them anywhere, so I go to the desk and ask. The woman there says they should be out somewhere, so I ask where. She just rolls her eyes and says, they must be out then, but I could order online. Okay, well, it was just for a stupid laugh and not worth paying for shipping, but as I go to leave, I check my phone and see I still have the webpage open. I also see that they have an order online and pick up in an hour option. Great, I have nothing better to do as my truck was supposed to be ready in about two hours. I found a nice desk chair in the back of the desk display area to sit at, where I could see most of the store from. Then, I ordered it for pickup. A moment later, I see an employee leave the front area with a small printout. He proceeds to walk around for a while, passing me a couple times. He can't find them either. After another 10 minutes, he goes back to the front and gets another person to start looking. More fruitless treks around the store, and I can see they are starting to panic. As I am in a swivel chair, I have a great view of everything and can rotate as needed. Thus far, I seem to be unnoticed. Now three of them are looking. Another few minutes and a manager has appeared to see what is happening. Finally, he gets everyone there to start looking other than another employee still helping the old lady. I overhear him commenting on how other things are not in the correct shelves either. After what has now been 1.5 hours since I entered the store, they realize the buttons are all still in a box up on a high shelf. The desk woman I originally dealt with is asked to go get a ladder and has to come past me. Now she finally realizes what happened and makes a very lovely face at me. She finally gets the box down and takes one out to the register while the manager has everyone else gather around to start organizing the store. I still haven't received the item is ready for pickup email, but I got the call my truck was ready. I notice she is glaring at me, but must have entered it in as ready as I get the email. Now, as these formerly chatty employees are being put to work, I walk up to the register and get the pickup from her. As soon as I start walking to the door, I hear her manager call for her to come help. Thanks for the tip to order online. OP, I have to say, this is the king of missed opportunities. You should have unpacked that thing right in front of that person, hit the button so it said that was easy, and then just walked away. Our next story today comes to us from Ancient Educator 76. We're only taking mobile orders right now. Okay, cool. Let's jump right in. I have taken on many assignments recently. Let's call the most recent a driver for Food Dude, where I deliver food to people who order. I picked up three orders, and toward the end of picking up the third order in a short time period, late at night, I had decided that smelling all of the fast food got me hungry for a bite. I decided that, upon picking up the last one over an hour before closing, I wouldn't waste time ordering my food while picking up my last mobile. Hot food matters, plus I know how this is to the drive through from experience, and decided I'd come back and order my own after I deliver. So I drive back to the fast food empire, and the drive through pipes in after a minute, and I say, yes, I'd like to order a... A rudely interrupting person says, We're only taking mobile orders right now. I explained to them that I was just here 10 minutes ago and would have ordered it then if I had known. I drive for food dude, as if this would somehow change their mind because it's mobile order adjacent or something. Then I hear a bevy of people laughing and making random comments, while the main person talking repeated even more rudely, We're only taking mobile orders right now with the background person saying, oh, F him, that's the guy who, before they disconnected the line. Enter malicious compliance. Well, luckily I have a hotspot, thank you first job. So I simply used my iPad to make an other food dude order through their location for quite the feast. I was only planning on getting a big nasty and some fries, but my order now consisted of coffee, a shaky shake, fries no salt, you know, some of the most annoying things to put together for an order. I also, while waiting in the drive-thru behind another bevy of cars, managed to change my name on the other Food Dude app as Jokes on Ulysses, which I know would, if it works like the Aloha system at my company, show up in their system as Jokes on You. 
I also managed to pick up my own order, seeing where my address and where I was located was the closest one. I was very thankful for this, because there had to be three other mobile order drivers in line, any of which could have been linked with the same food delivery company. So here I go, finally inching up to the drive through as one of the most annoying looking people in the world. Maybe I am biased, but this dude's trying to bring back the mushroom cut, leans out way more than needed, just to happily remind me, dude, we're not making anything for you, it's my, my turn to interrupt. Oh, it's under jokes on, which I pronounced Jokason, like it was an actual name. I just picked up the order in line like right now. So he huffs away and they take an insanely long time making it, to the point I feel bad because they didn't have me pull around while three other cars were behind me. I even asked, hey, do you want me to pull around? I'm happy to wait. They just scowled and went back to making the order. They finally hand out all of the things, drinks first, and I start ripping into the items in front of them as I shift into gear. The slow realization of what just happened appeared on their faces, and I regret that I only got to see it out of the corner of my eye. Well OP, the only downside I see to this one is that you had to pay the inflated for delivery prices, maybe even a delivery fee to the company as well. But the one question I really have is, did you give yourself a tip? Our last story today comes to us from Objective Uncown. Yes, that's actually what it says. If you don't like my scummy business practices, report me. Let's jump right in. This is a bit of a long story, but I'll try to keep it short. First, you need to know that I have just started at a really great new job getting paid what I am worth. I am an industrial appliance repair person, mechanical engineer, or whatever you want to call it. In the three weeks I have been at the new job, I have drastically reduced machine downtime by such an amount, my bonus that's paid out at the last pay each month was almost $9,000. I get a bonus based on money saved because of reduced downtime. Well, Friday I was in early working on an industrial washer and the part supplier was in so we could talk, and I mentioned that I need to get some foam insulation for the machines. The contractor they used to hire pulled it all out. I said the guy was a total scammer, the machines were in crap shape, the guy was making sure the crap broke down to make more money. It's there to reduce vibration and noise causing less wear on the machine. The guy looks at me and says, I am the tech, like I should be embarrassed from what I said. And going on like, oh, if you think that you should report me, but I have a 10 year relationship with this company, I'll make sure you're out of here. Well, F the guy, called a meeting with my employer today on a Sunday, so I was kind of panicking. Well, I went to the meeting armed with photos and pictures of all the damages. At first, it was a supply meeting of what I need, and we got to the foam, and I decided to comply with what he wanted. I reported him. I explained what was missing, what it causes, and the reasons it would be removed. The only reason is money, to force them to break down more often, and I straight out said, the guy is scamming you. Well, the guy calls me a liar, that they should have trust in him, that they had a great working relationship, blah blah blah. The building manager who oversees the three buildings I work in knows me, knows I am honest and trusting to a fault. I was asked to leave the meeting and I went to grab some lunch. I came back and they asked me to come back in. The guy is gone. I was asked if I could give a list of trusted suppliers and I did. The company is great. They see my value and trusted me. They cut contact with that guy on the spot. It's nice to not only get paid what you're worth, but have a darn good working environment built on trust. Now, OP did comment down below that they left school at 16 and so the way they write may not be top notch, but it doesn't take somebody with an English major to do a great job working for a company and also to realize when that company's getting screwed. Good job, OP. Check out all five OPs linked in the description down below. I thank you for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day and we'll see you tomorrow.